Well, welcome everyone to our uh, next Social Media Small Bites webinar. Today, we're gonna to be talking about authentically interacting with your community. And I'm glad you're all joining us today. And uh, um, such a beautiful day here, at least, that you're spending some time inside over lunch hour. Um, my name is Jake Kundert. I'm with the Iowa Valley RCND. Um, and I'm here with my colleagues from Northeast Iowa RCND, as well as Emily Stokel, who's gonna lead our training today on um, interacting with your community. Just a reminder, this is uh, one in a series of our Small Bites webinars. Uh, we had one that was in March, and then we'll have uh, two more. Um, it's always the, what is this, the fourth Tuesday of every month, I think. Um, so we'll have one again in May and June, and then we'll, we'll carry them on through the rest of the year. So there will be one um, every month this year. So um, previously, previous webinars are all on our YouTube page. Um, and you can, if you want to look at reflecting them with insights, you can check there, as well as the webinars that we hosted last, um, last season as well. Okay, so today's again, authentically interacting with your community, learning about how to tell your story, how to show your personality online, and how to communicate with your audience in a way that grows your business. Um, just a couple housekeeping notes. Uh, if you have questions, um, during Emily's presentation, I'd ask that you just type them into the chat. If you have kind of larger discussion points that you want to save to the end, um, you can always unmute. We'll have some time at the end of this webinar when you can ask questions to the group. Um, and, but until then, just go ahead and type into the chat and I can um, just kind of interrupt Emily as we go. And with that, I'll pass it over to Emily Stokel to lead our webinar today. Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. I'm going to pull up my presentation. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can see that on the screen? Awesome. Okay, so today we're going to talk about engaging with your audience in order to build a community online. So the whole point of social media is to you know, connect with an audience, develop a community. Um, it's not necessarily about growing followers or numbers on a social media app. It's about your community, the people who are following your account, knowing who you are, what you do, and what you're about. So we're going to, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, Usually, if you use tips like this and you are more engaging and you do interact with your audience more authentically, it will result in your account growing. But I just kind of wanted to frame it up that way that our goal of this today is to help people understand how best um, to connect with you online. So first tip is treating, you know, your social media just like any other form of good communication. So always responding to everything um, that people write to you. Be sure to write back just as you would with any friendly relationship. So always replying to all your comments and your direct messages, your DMs. Um, if it's difficult for you to keep up with comments and direct messages, what I suggest is setting a time every day. You think of it as like office hours. You could either do it in the morning or at the end of your day and sit down and reply to comments and DMs. You can even do it on your desktop and um, you can access all your comments and DMs in one place between Facebook and Instagram that way. So that can be a way to like sit down, dedicate the time to it and write back to everyone who's commented. It doesn't have to be paragraphs and paragraphs, but again, just think of this as like a person that you're trying to build a relationship with and you want to communicate with them and write back and be friendly. Um, if you are going to be away for a little bit of time or you're slow to respond, you can actually set up automated responses, kind of like an out of office or like a frequently asked questions on Facebook. And I've linked that here in the presentation. You'll get my slides after this presentation. So you could follow that link if that's something that you are interested in doing. Um, you know, if for example, you want to have an automated message because you're out on vacation and you're not going to be replying or something like that, just so that you're communicating to folks like what they can expect from you. 
You can also set up saved replies on Instagram for things that are asked of you frequently. So if you're giving the same questions over and over, you can set up saved replies and write back to people um, with those answers more quickly. So on the flip side, if you know your first thing was like maybe you're getting too overwhelmed by so many comments or direct messages, on the flip side, maybe you're not getting many comments or direct messages. Comments and direct messages are a great, great way to like build relationship with people online because again, like that's that communication back and forth. So if you're not getting any of those, you don't really have a chance to like be in dialogue with your community. So a good way to start getting more correct comments or DMs is by asking engaging questions in your captions, trying to start a conversation. So I put a few examples here, you know, they can range from like fun to helpful to just like things to get to know you. Um, you know, for example, the best meal you've ever eaten. Uh, question that's there. You could do a post about the best meal you've ever eaten, tell people about it. That tells them something about you. It's a nice story. Um, and then you can ask them what's the best meal you've ever eaten. And it prompts your community to write back to you and opens up that space for you to talk to each other. Um, so save these. Uh, these are just a starting place, but using questions in your captions is a great way to start those conversations. I also recommend taking a chance to revise your hashtag strategy. And we have a whole Small Bites lesson on this saved on the Boost YouTube channel. So I'm not going to go into it in a ton of depth, but using hashtags um, that are actually targeted to the community you're trying to grow will make it so that your community is more more likely people who are gonna stick around. You know, if you are only using hashtags that have millions and millions of followers, you may get some exposure to people. But again, followers are not necessarily the goal. Like we want those people to be like people who would actually care about a business like yours, people who might actually shop with you. We want them to be like your community, right? So using more specific hashtags is something that I always um, suggest. And like I said, I go into that a little bit more on a previous small bite. So I definitely recommend that training as well. Another great tip is to update your profile page, both on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can use the edit profile button. Um, you have limited numbers of characters for what you can put in your profile page. So you don't have a chance to say everything, but basically you wanna tell people who you are, what you do and what they'll find on this page if they decide to stick around. Again, that means that the people who are following you are people who are gonna be actually interested in the stuff that you're sharing online. So these are a couple of um, vintage sellers that I just picked from their bio. Um, you know, I really like this one over here. Um, it's pretty specific who they, like what they do. They, they have vintage from across the US and Italy. That's kind of unique. Um, you know, they have information about where you can shop, how you can shop either, you know, in how to pick up items in person or that you can shop with them on their Instagram story. Again, this person um, says a little bit about who she is, what she likes, and then kind of like what you can expect to see if you stick around on the page. These are a couple, a couple more. Um, so some businesses will have their hours, how to contact them. Um, you know, this person over here says shop my Etsy and they have a link to their Etsy page. Just thinking about, thinking about the bio on Instagram and the about page on Facebook as kind of like the first thing that someone sees when they land on your page. And you want them to be able to make a snap decision that says, yes, like I'm about the same things as this person is about. I wanna be a part of this community. So those are just a couple of basics. Um, otherwise, once you are creating content, I like to really encourage people to use all of the features that are available to you on social media. So, um, 
this just this just means that you're creating content that is engaging and interesting. If you think about yourself as a viewer, you want to be entertained. So mixing up the types of things that you're sharing is just more entertaining for your followers. Um, so a couple of different social media features that you can try that are interesting to watch. You can try doing a Facebook or Instagram live just to chat with your community. So you'll be speaking on the live and they'll be writing to you in the comments. Um, you can also do Q and A's where you answer questions from your community. And again, that kind of gives you an opportunity to be in conversation with them a little bit more. Um, you can use, there's lots of features that you can use on Instagram stories, which just makes the content more interesting to watch and more engaging, um, more interactive. So you can do polls, you can ask, you know, people to rate certain things or vote on certain things. You can ask them questions again, like the, what's the best meal you've ever eaten question example. Um, and use other features that are available on stories so that they're more interactive and there's a little bit more of a back and forth between you and your audience, um, just like it would be if you were in conversation with them. You can also use Instagram Reels or Stories for showing more personality. Um, don't be afraid to have a little fun. People like to see the real people behind the businesses that they're supporting. So that's always something that I encourage too. You also have the opportunity um, on Instagram to do carousel posts, which are basically when you have multiple images on one post. And these can be great for infographics or more educational content. Um, and that can be a way for, again, you to kind of like open up bigger conversations with the folks who are following you online. And lastly, just be yourself. Um, you know, again, think of the people that you are trying to bring into your audience as being people that you would want to be friends with. So people love to know a little bit more about you. They love to see the faces behind your small business. And here are a couple of tips for you to try out in order to feel like you're being more yourself um, with your community. So sharing photos of the owner or any employees providing a genuine introduction, who they are, what they do, what they like. Um, that can be a good way for the community to feel like they know you more. I also really encourage people to share birthdays or work anniversaries. Um, again, people just like to see the folks who are behind your small business. So those are great opportunities to talk about them and tell their story. Um, you can also share throwback photos. You know, if you've been doing this a long time, you probably have some great older photos of yourself from the early days, special memories, big highlights from the business. And if you share these throwbacks, people will become more invested in your story. And they'll want to, they'll know a little, they'll feel like they know a little bit more about you and they'll feel a little bit close to you. I also encourage folks um, to not be afraid to talk to the camera. So um, showing your face on Facebook or Instagram stories, taking people on the behind the scenes of your day. People really do like to see the faces um, behind the small business. And then the last tip is writing your captions or any other written content on your social media pages in your natural tone of voice. So again, think about how you might talk to a friend. So if you would use emojis when you're talking to a friend, that's a great way to make your writing feel more familiar with the folks that you're writing to online. If that's not something that you would naturally do, then maybe that's something you wanna skip because it doesn't feel natural to you. Um, the point is to, to speak naturally and to be authentic, again, like thinking about the folks that you're engaging with on, online, not just as like a follower account or an, an anonymous profile, but more as though like, you know, these are my, my neighbors or my community members and I'm trying to get to know them better. So anything you can do to um, make them feel more comfortable is, is a great way to do it. 
So those are some quick tips. Like I said, um, this will be available for you to look back on the slides as well as the recording. But I would love to open it up to questions or discussions. We can dig into any of those tips more if there's anything more you would like to know. Great. Thank you, Emily. Um, yeah, so while you're all thinking about questions you might have for Emily, um, I just wanted to include this slide with uh, all of our Boost team's uh, contact information. If you have any questions um, that you think of when this webinar is over, do you want to ask any of us? Um, here's Emily's at the top, and then myself and uh, Julia Spain from our office at Iowa Valley, and then Mallory and Josh at the office in Northeast Iowa. So if anyone has questions, go ahead and shoot. Um, I do have one to get us started here, Emily. I'm curious, you know, if you are getting into, I think about asking questions of your followers in your posts, and it can kind of feel like a bummer if you ask a question and no one responds. And so how do you, how do you kind of get over that? It's almost like, an, like a vulnerability when you kind of put yourself out there with a question then you kind of get swatted down if no one responds. Um, so how, how do you kind of, how do you approach that situation? How often do you keep trying to keep trying asking questions until you feel like, well, my audience just isn't gonna respond? <laughs> yeah, great question. Um, I would say do keep trying it a couple of times. Hopefully you can't hear my dog barking too much in the background. Do keep trying it a couple of times because again, like think of it as this idea of like getting to know somebody. So like, it's going to take a little while if you are just kind of opening up for the first time for people to feel like opening up or writing back to you. So sometimes it can take a little bit of time. Um, another thing is if you do a QA and a um, or something like that, you know, you can always give me one second. The joys of working from home. There he's good. So if you do a Q&A, you can always, this is a sneaky little tip that a lot of folks do, you can always prepare a couple of questions ahead of time and answer them as though the community has asked them. Um, that way, again, like um, sometimes people will get more comfortable with asking questions after they see that somebody or answering questions, asking questions and answering questions after they see that somebody else has done it. Um, so that's another way that you can kind of get the conversation going. Great. Julia has a question. Are there tutorials for the Instagram ideas that you had, <clears throat> excuse me, that you had? Julia, do you mind coming off mute and telling me a little bit more kind of about like what tool you might be specifically interested in and I can maybe go into it in more detail? There's still a Julia, so I think it was Julia McGuire. Oh, <laughs> yep, it, it's me. Um, so I am wondering specifically about the in Instagram stories where it says swipe up mm. for more okay. info. That's, that's really the one I'm looking at. Yep, good question. Um, and, and maybe this is a good idea for a future boost. Um, maybe I could do some uh, one specifically on Instagram stories because there are a lot of features there. When people say swipe up, um, unfortunately, you don't have the ability to put links in the, in the swipe up. You don't get the swipe up feature until you have 10,000 followers. Um, so that is something um, that, you know, maybe eventually you will be able to get the swipe up um, until you get that. What I recommend, um, let me show you. I'm going to share my screen again. So like see this business here, they don't have 10,000 followers, so they can't swipe up. So they have a link to their website here in their, um, in their bio. 
that people can click on. Um, so you might also hear people say things like, the link is in my bio, and that is what they're talking about there, is that they have a link to their store or their website where more information is available there. The rest of the stories features that I talked about, though, um, like the polls, the questions box, what are some of the other ones, the voting, all that stuff, you have access to that no matter how many followers you have. And so I just recommend kind of like looking at what those features are and playing around with them. It can be fun. You know, the polls don't have to be about anything serious, um, but it's just more interactive to watch and it gets people to actually like click on stuff on your page rather than just kind of tapping through all of the stories. While you're talking about links quickly, do you want to talk about link trees and other things like that that help you put multiple links in your bio? Yeah, good question. So yeah, like we showed on that person's bio, you can only have one link in that bio profile um, page. So if you need to have multiple things that you're linking to, so for example, if you need to have your website, but then you also need to have your store. So you have more than one link um, that you need to be able to point to people to. There's an app called Linktree, um, which allows you to put multiple links in there. And then it will give you kind of a specific, it will give you a specific URL that you can then put in your bio. So if they click on that, they will then have the option to like pick from your different selections rather than it just being the one selection. And Linktree is free to use. Um, it's pretty easy to set up. You can remove links at any time. So if you do want to link people to multiple things, um, it's a great option for Instagram if you don't have the swipe up feature. But I def there. definitely recommend at a bare minimum adding your website or your shop page, like whatever web presence you might have um, to your bio. Great. Emily, I just pulled up our Grow Instagram ac account so I can show folks our link tree real quick. Oh, cool. Yep. Do you have the share screen ability? I think I do. Yep. So we have just linked to the top five um, links that we usually direct folks to on um, your Instagram account. Um, so it's just really easy to direct folks to our bio. Um, and all they have to do is click and then click again. And I uh, can usually find what we're, what we're directing them to. Yeah, if you go back one page. Um, oh. No, you're fine, Julia. It, it, see how it, it gave her like, um, it said like linktree.growjc. Um, it gave her a specific link that's her own name. See there. Um, so just as, just as any other website would be, it, it makes that link for you and then they can click on it and they have the option to go to multiple different pages. And on the back, on the back. What I like, you can see the analytics of clicks on the different links. So you can see who, what links are being most used. And I think if you pay for it, you can actually see who's going to the links maybe too, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, Anne has a question about selfies. Any tips for managing your phone to do a selfie? Having a hard time framing a selfie. Yeah, so a couple of tips. So um, I don't have it. Oh, I do have it sitting by me, hold on. I actually have a tripod that my phone goes in. Um, so I can actually, this, it, you know, you can find these online very easily for $20 and your phone basically goes in there and it holds it. Um, so you can set it up and then your phone camera also has a timer. So on the iPhone, I know they have a three second and a 10 second timer. So you can set a timer, which gives you a little bit more time to say, am I in frame here um, or not? So that you, that's what I usually do. And you can do that for either photos or videos. Uh, 
Okay. Oh. <laughs> I still don't like to take a picture of myself and put it on Facebook. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, you know, you don't have to be in every single photo. Um, you know, if there's like group photos or like throwback photos, like there are other ways to get around it or even photos of you doing something. So it's not necessarily your face, but it's like of you working or of you doing something um, until you get more comfortable with it. Like those are just things that people like to see that there's a person behind the business. Um, so that's kind of what I recommend folks try out. I can't believe I'm going so to some type of external holder. Yeah, yep. I would just get like a phone. If you just Google search like phone tripod, something will come up. I can't believe I'm gonna share this tip because it's very embarrassing. But one time I saw Kim Kardashian talk about a way to take a flattering selfie. And she always said that if you hold it up high and angle it, you'll get a more flattering selfie. And I've never forgot, forgotten that. <laughs> there, there is no flattering selfie in the pig pen. There just isn't. <laughs> See, and for that, like if you had a tripod or something, you could put it on a timer and then you could like, you know, the photo could be just like of you doing something in the pig pen. It doesn't have to be like you posing, you know what I mean? Like it could just be set the timer, then do whatever you were going to do and it will take the photo. Um, but it, it might be more dynamic to people. They might, they the point is you're trying to make people say like, oh yeah, there's a person behind that account that I can talk to and engage with and have conversations with. Um, so showing yourself is always a great way to kind of spark that conversation. We're at uh, the end of our time here. So I'm gonna launch a poll here quickly, just as two quick questions about if you learned anything valuable today and if you would recommend uh, this webinar to a fellow market manager or vendor and say thank you all for joining us. Um, this webinar and all of our boost work is funded through a, a USDA Farmers Market Promotion Program grant. So we're very appreciative to the USDA for um, supporting the work that we're doing here in Iowa. Um, if you have any questions, I'll go back to this slide. Um, you're, feel free to reach out to any of us by email. Um, we'd be happy to, to help talk about social media. Thank you again for attending today's webinar. I will follow up by the end of the day with uh, a link to the slides and then also the, a link to the recording if you wanna go back and, and look at anything again. But thank you all for coming today. Hope you have a good rest of your day. <laughs>